Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video we'll be taking a look at a new smart projector from Avis. This is the HD6K. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video we'll be taking a look at the Avis HD6K. This is the fourth gen version. Avis is a new company to me. They reached out to us and said we'd like to take a look at our projector and uh, yeah, always looking to see something new and fresh and exciting. And this certainly ticks most of those boxes. This is the first of the projectors that I've actually seen, which is a smart projector. So essentially what that means is it has a baked in operating system. Now this operating system is in the form of Android. So essentially anything you can do on your Android phone, this device can do but also at the same time, it can project it onto a large screen of up to 40 inches as a minimum or a whopping 200 inches at the maximum setting. Specification wise, this is a 600 lumen device and it's got a rated lamp of 10,000 hours. So um, yeah, if you work like five hours a day over a certain amount of days, that's uh, yeah, like five years or something. So a very, very long time if you're using it every single day for five hours a day. This one comes into us at the moment in the UK at around about £300 or $299.99. And they also do uh, refurbished models as well. So ones that are been reclaimed and rebuilt, etc., etc. And you can get an amazing discount on those. So if you want to check out any of those things, again, links will be in the video description. So this is, um, yeah, basically this is like an adult projector. So essentially, because this has Android built in, really all you need is a power source, which is a kettle lead and either a USB stick or your mobile phone, or basically just use it as it is. It has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth built in, as you'd expect with an Android device. So you can actually do pretty much everything straight away out of the box. You can use all your favorite apps, Netflix, YouTube, etc., etc. If you want to use it for watching sports, that kind of thing, Sky News, you can get the app on the Android, put it on here and you can watch Sky News, Sky Sports, whatever the case may be, you choose essentially. There's also ports on the back, so you don't have to be limited to what you can actually run from Android itself. On the back, you've got specific ports for the VGA or, or RGB VGA. You've also got two HDMI ports, HDMI one and two, which you can select through. You also got audio in and out, so you can have a pass through. So maybe if you've got this connected permanently to some kind of PC or output device, you can input the audio into it and also then pass it straight back out into maybe an amplifier, that kind of thing. Also, you've got the ability for the old fashioned S video or composite, you can plug that into the back there. And you've also got a couple of USB ports. So even though this is both Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you can still connect up USB things, so such as a USB flash drive, or maybe even a wireless keyboard and mouse. So depending on the game, what you're doing, you could possibly be playing games with your Android setup in here and actually use a regular keyboard and mouse or some sort of gamepad. Tons and tons of options. Now we'll go through, take a quick look at the box itself, look at the ports, etc., in a little bit more detail. Then we'll go through the specifications on the website. We'll get it all set up. And after we've got it set up, do some tests, movies, etc., etc. Some of the apps go through the settings. And then at the end, we'll wrap up with my final thoughts. So starting off, packaging wise, a decent packaging. Actually inside there, there's some really decent foam inserts, that kind of styrofoam stuff, which keeps things all nice and secure. So if you're not gonna have this out permanently and you wanna keep it somewhere safe and secure, excellent packaging for doing that. It does say on the packaging what it supports. So you've got things like Facebook, Twitter, uh, RSS feeds, Google Plus, uh, I'm not even sure what that one is, Pinterest, uh, LinkedIn, Ooh. and uh, I'm not sure what that is actually. But anyway, it basically means you can use apps on here, which is uh, pretty much a given. It is the uh, HD6K 4th gen. This is in the black version, although I would have called it the gold version because it's got this really nice kind of, uh, well, it is actually brushed aluminium. It is metal on the top here. So it's got a, a brushed kind of, almost like a champagne gold finish to the top of it. So I'm assuming if you get the white version, then the black plastics around the outside edge will be white. So maybe if you've got a rather minimalist setup and you've gone for a very neutral theme in your home and you don't want this big black box sticking up on the wall somewhere or on your shelf, then you can get this in white, which uh, yeah, I guess would look very nice in most setups. So this is the black version. Um, it also comes with a accessories box, which we'll take a look at now and see what we've got in there. So first of all, we've got a remote control. And actually, this is a really snazzy remote control. It's a, a gloss white, and you've got all the buttons on there, so you've got options which are pretty easy to work out for adjusting the display, etc. You've also got one for changing between 16x9, 4x3, etc. Power on, obviously, a mute button, your control joystick, so up, down, left, right, etc., and OK to select things. 
You also got the Android type button, so you've got home, menu, and back, and you've got your volume up and down. All very nice, and it's actually a plastic finish on top, but there is actually like a metal substrate to it, so the actual main bulk of it is metal, so it has got a little bit of weight to it, so it does feel quite premium. And also the finish on the remote control around the outside edges actually does match pretty nicely uh, with the unit itself, this top section, so yeah, nice little feature. This takes a couple of AA batteries, Nice and easy to do, just unclip the back, put those in. I've done that already uh, off camera. So that is the remote control. Also, you get a UK power plug. Obviously, depending where you buy it, you may get a different power plug for the EU, US, etc., etc. You also got a, I think they call that an RCA lead. So that's RCA into 3.5. So if you're putting a audio input in, which isn't on the 3.5 mil jack, you can use that to adapt it, which is a quite a nice touch. Also, you get a HDMI lead, so that's a looks like about a meter, meter and a half HDMI lead. Again, very handy. Nice thing actually is a uh, there's a fuse, a little glass fuse. So if for some reason the uh, the fuse goes in the unit, you have actually got a replacement included in the box, which is pretty awesome. Uh, also, you've got a ABIS user guide, and this goes through step by step of what the features do, how to set up, all that kind of stuff. Excellent, we like that. And what else do we get in here? So we get this from Abis, uh, your feedback counts and for leaving reviews. They do sell on Amazon, eBay, um, and also you can you leave a review on reviews.co.uk. And there we go. You must activate your warranty. So there is how to activate your warranty. There's QR codes on there, all that kind of usual stuff. So yeah, good stuff. It has got a one year warranty, which covers both the projector itself and the bulb individually. So should anything happen to the bulb, which, uh, these bulbs can be expensive to replace, so it's good to know that it is all completely covered under the warranty. So let's take a look at the unit in a little bit more depth. So on the front, you can probably all see whether or not you can actually, because the way the grill is on the front, there are actually two speakers in here, which uh, kind of makes it almost like a sound bar. So you've got some really good stereo speakers built in already. So really nice for watching movies, etc., etc. They are front firing. So obviously, depending where you're putting it, you may want to have this put behind you, but again, Generally, these are quite loud, so it shouldn't really matter where they are. If you're in a home setup, really, it needs to be at least two meters away from a projection surface to give you roughly about a 40 to 50 inch screen, so do bear that in mind. On the front, you've got the lens cap, which is a nice rubberized cap for protecting this really smart looking lens, actually. You can tell that they've actually put a lot of attention to detail on this. They've got some really nice touches on this from the metal finish on the top to just the kind of the, uh, the outside rim of the lens. It all looks very, very premium. So that's it for the front. There's also a IR receiver. So again, depending on where you're going to mount this, you've got an IR receiver there. There is one on the back as well, which we'll take a look at shortly. On this side is uh, ventilation. Now there is actually a fan in there to keep it cool, as you'd expect, because this is running a 120 watt bulb in there or lamp. So it does need to keep that cool. But there is actually a filter on here as well, which is a really cool little fi filter with uh, looks like some kind of almost like an activated charcoal layer on there. So that's uh, pretty cool. So that can go back in there. And also inside you can see things like the power transformer, etc. So that is gonna keep that all nice and clean. And that just snaps back into place. Not particularly easy. So that would've been a bit nicer to have a bit of rail on that. Maybe it's cause it's new and the plastic's fresh. So uh, hopefully that'll bed in. But really you shouldn't have to change that or do anything with it. Maybe give it a vacuum every now and then depending on how dusty the environment is. Moving around onto the back, you've got the on off switch, so you don't have to have it permanently turned on, you can just use that. Got the kettle leads uh, section there. On here, we've got our ports, so we've got HDMI, another HDMI, two USB 2.0 ports, a composite jack, which is for putting kind of older things like Nintendo Wii's, maybe older PlayStations, that kind of thing into. And then you've got your audio in and audio out pass through. So again, using that adapter that we had earlier, the RCA jacks, if you've got the older devices, which has got the two RCAs, you can run it into there, et cetera, et cetera. Also, you've got a LAN port on there. So if you uh, want to take advantage of streaming movies and you want to do it at a higher bit rate, then for a more stable connection, you can use a LAN cable. And above that, we've got our D-Sub or VGA port. Next up is another IR receiver. So again, depending on where it's mounted, you can aim the remote and it should pick up on either side. Moving around to this side, and this is where inside here it is a huge, huge heat pipe sort of cooler system. Very similar to the sort of things you see on PCs, and that runs the entire length across there. And obviously because you've got the fan blowing through, both of these will blow out, so it keeps it nice and cool. Or at least that is what I've been told. Moving to the bottom, then 
there's easy access to the lamp, so if you need to replace the lamp, etc., a couple of screws there, and you can pull out the lamp assembly. There is also an adjustment wheel on the front, so it gives you actually uh, a load of tilt adjustment, although you can do tilt and zoom in the actual app itself when it's running. There is a digital zoom allowed, so you can change it. So if it's in a position where you kind of, is a bit too big for the wall you're on, you can use the digital zoom to either reduce it, or maybe you can do it the other way around and actually make it larger. Uh, moving on to the top, you can see I've got my fingerprints on here already. The brushed aluminium top in that champagne gold, and you've got the Abis logo there, Beyond Future. You've got your adjustment wheels there for uh, focus, and also you've got a little bit of the um, parallelogram, I think it is, basically to level out the picture. You've got your up, down, left, right, and the OK button. we have got power off, and the return button, and you've got your menu and all that kind of stuff. And there's a little power LED on the top to tell you what situation is going on. So that is pretty much for the walkthrough. Let's have a quick look on the site, and we'll go through some of the individual specs, and then we'll get this thing set up. Okay, so this is the uh, ABIS site, and again, you can go here to get details of all the stuff that's going on, and you go to the support section, etc. so warranty registration, etc. or contact if you've got any issues. And here we see, this is the model that we're currently reviewing. This is the ABIS HD 6K, fourth generation projector, LED smart Android 6.0, and currently has uh, five-star reviews, so it's all, all really good. As you can see, uh, at the moment, it's 249 XVAT, uh, 299 including VAT, that is currently on a special offer, has been reduced uh, quite considerably from 45719. Uh, on the site, you've got description, technical specs, and videos and reviews, etc. So, main benefits you can see there. Uh, the Android parameters is probably what we're more interested in at the moment. So, CPU is a ARM Cortex A7 quad core 1.1 GHz CPU. The GPU is a Mali 450 GP4, which is a 6 core. You've got a gig of RAM and 8 gigs of ROM, so for storing your apps, etc and that's running Android 6.0, which is a custom version for them. And also the warranty, 12 months, which covers the projector and the bulb. Uh, detailed specifications, I think that's uh, pretty much very similar stuff. So again, the projector, actually, I was surprised to see that it is actually a 5.8 inch LCD TFT actually inside that machine. So that explains why it is quite a big chunky boy. So obviously, the larger you've got your actual projector inside the actual screen that is blasting the light through, the better the image. So uh, with a 5.8 inch screen, that is basically the size of most mobile phones, which is actually a massive, massive display. And also goes through a five piece glass lens as well, which I think it says there, yeah, five piece glass lens. So that is gradually bumping up the size as it goes through the lenses. Uh, focus is manual focus for those of you that are interested. And again, it's a 120 watt LED lamp with 50,000 hours life. I think I said 10,000 earlier actually, so 50,000 hours life. I do stand corrected. Uh, you've got electrical zoom by remote control, etc. Picture size between 40 and 200 inches. And you've got keystone, you've got 15 degrees of physical correction, which I called parallelogram earlier, which is the completely wrong thing. Noise, which is what a lot of people are going to be interested in, is uh, less than 25 dB, which we'll find out very shortly. And you've got your machine size there, etc. It also is uh, 3D capable as well, so you can do uh, 3D films and movies if you want to, which is good stuff. So anyway, that's enough of that. Let's uh, get it set up and we'll see what it's actually like and see if it lives up to the hype. Okay, so here we are. We've got the uh, unit set up and it's projecting on our wall. Now currently this is in the UK. It is uh, just after half past three in the afternoon and we've actually got the, uh, the windows, the blinds open. So we've got natural daylight coming in. So this is what it's going to look like for you at home. This is just a, a plain white wall. Um, nothing special, not projection surface or anything. And this is what it comes out like. This is with the lights pretty much on, like normal daylight. So if you're running that with natural daylight, then it's going to be absolutely fine. So what we're going to do now is that's a, uh, a good sort of representation. If I turn on one of the studio lights, you can see how much it dims. So there we go. It's still, that's with the studio light on and actually it's still, still pretty visible. Obviously, you probably wouldn't want to put a studio light on anywhere near it, especially when it's pointing directly towards the unit. So let's turn that back off, and what I'll do is now I'll black out the, uh, the room a little bit more. So now it's uh, relatively light, you can still see, um, hopefully you can see, I'm still here, and this is what it looks like. So it's a really nice vivid display. This is the menu that comes up, so if you press the menu button, then you get options at the bottom like you would with that Android device. So you've got fast app, a signal source you can go through, you can set up your image, go through things like your standard warm custom moods, 
uh, you've got your effects for the sound and a trapezoid adjustment. Now one thing I did notice actually is when you go into the trapezoid, you've actually got a gyroscope on there. So there's a built-in gyroscope. So you go into gyroscope, press the OK button, and the gyro calibrates. So it actually self-levels, which uh, I thought is actually very, very cool. Actually, I've just noticed that's slightly off-center. So move it around, there we go, that's a little bit better. So this is the uh, the screen, so first of all in the top left hand corner, um, you've got your signal source, etc. You've got your file explorer, click across you can go into apps, and then you go into settings. So this, if you've got an Android device, you'll recognize this. So you've got your Bluetooth, your wired connection, Wi-Fi hotspot, your uh, MCAST, Wi-Fi connectivity. We have connected up, so currently on our, our Wi-Fi. You can see in this top corner, hopefully, it says the uh, the Wi-Fi strength, etc. This room is awful for Wi-Fi. It's one of the worst rooms in the house, unfortunately, but still there it is. So you've got uh, projection settings in there, system setup. You can upgrade your Android from here. System sound, uh, reset to factory, etc. But essentially, again, if you've ever used Android, you will totally find this uh, a breeze to use. So let's go back. So we'll press the back button. And we'll go back to the main menu. And there we go, so there's our main menu. So again, you can use this for doing Word documents, that sort of stuff, if you want to, for projection. Um, there's a section at the bottom for doing the cleanup of memory. You've got your Netflix app, you've got your Kodi app in there, so obviously if you want to use Kodi, it's uh, baked in straight away. You've got your screen assistant, so if you're doing any sort of display from your phones, all that kind of stuff, you can use that. And you've got your normal app market, which is your Android store, effectively. So again, this is pretty much set up as a Android app. So let's, uh, let's go into YouTube, because that's a pretty obvious one. And there we go. So, yeah, you can use it as you would normally. Go through, selecting all your information, all the bits and pieces. You can scroll through. So you press and hold the button down. It will scroll further. If you press and hold the button upwards, it will go up. You can if you want to, like I said, plug in a keyboard and mouse and use it that way if you wish to. Entirely up to you. So let's uh, let's put some movies on and we'll see what it actually looks like. Now I'm not going to use real movies because, uh, yeah, copyright strikes, etc. So I've got a USB stick, so I'm going to plug that in and there we go. Fans. Well, two new sets of fans from InWin. We've got this looks pretty good. ASM 140. Very bright. The colours are amazing actually. 20. Let's see what the volume gets like. Guess what the difference is. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so these are the new fans from our friends over at Inwin. They've been sent to me for review purposes. There is a slight downside, unfortunately. Inwin don't actually make a case, well, at least not one of their consumer cases, which actually fits 114 There we go, that is, uh, that's pretty loud. <laughs> Let's go back. So here is the uh, another video. This is the Space Shuttle takeoff. That does look pretty impressive. Look at the detail in the clouds over on that side. That is pretty awesome. Those colors are pretty cool. Okay, so that's enough of that one. So that's some of the videos. And now you can take a look. So if we go into... The app market, you can see it is actually completely working. So you can go into Google Play, you just need to sign in. You can get all your normal Google apps, games, etc., etc. Uh, maybe put your email on it. Have your emails on a big screen. Who knows? So again, you've got options there. So Netflix, if you want to watch Netflix, you can go in. The app is baked in. A lot of devices won't actually uh, work with Netflix. So it's good to see that it's actually baked in already. And yeah, all works absolutely fine. I don't have a Netflix account, unfortunately, so uh, we can't quite see that. But you get a general idea. The screen quality is excellent. Loads and loads of flexibility. Um, it will display up to 4K. It will downsample it to 1080p. But I think as you can see from the previous uh, way that things were looking, it does absolutely look amazing. We are a little bit limited on what we can actually show on this because obviously copyright protection, etc., etc. 
Um, yeah, it is very difficult to find anything to actually show you apart from kind of like snippets. So hopefully this has given you a good idea of what things are like. I actually think it looks fantastic. Okay, so we're giving that a miss because copyrights and we go to the signal source and I've selected HDMI 2. It actually has a tick by it. If there's anything plugged in, it will actually notify you what is connected. So we go for HDMI 2. So we've chosen an old favorite. We've got the old uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And this is running on my PC currently, as you can see, so. And let's go. Actually, you can tell it is that time of day, so it is becoming a little bit darker. Oh, not the smoothest of takeoffs there. looking good and it's uh, responsive looks really nice retract the flaps and yep yeah, it looks pretty decent it's a shame actually it's not a little bit earlier in the day as you'd be able to see a lot more detail rather than the wet and murky Newcastle which I think is where we're at Anyway, you get the general idea. It looks uh, it looks pretty decent, and just spinning around there, you can see that the frame rate is actually doing pretty well. So I think that's going to pretty much wrap it up. It looks good on both the Windows desktop and playing movies, games, etc., etc. Very good indeed. Right, let's get back to uh, wrapping this up. Okay, so there you go. There has been a look through the specifications and also some visual displays of the ABIS. I guess it's called ABIS. Yeah. ABIS Electronics Projector. Again, this is the HD 6K. The weird name, the 6K, I guess the 6K is to do with the lumens. So it's 6,000 lumens. That's 6K. So that kind of makes sense. A little bit misleading, although I guess it does do 2K and 4K down sample to 1080p. So yeah, that kind of makes sense as well. But anyway, I think this is actually a really cool device. The fact that it's got all those smart features built in, there's so much to go through. Obviously as well, um, with the memory stick, if you download files which are not completely compatible with what is already inbuilt, then you can always get something like VLC player from the App Store and run your things through there. Or just get a codec pack, that sort of thing, and then that opens up a whole world of avenues of what you can actually watch on your device. Obviously again, you can watch your things like Netflix, YouTube, all that kind of stuff. Code is in there as well already and various other apps so you can use those to your heart's content or install your own apps, uh, yeah, whatever you want to do. Noise wise, again, it is a projector. It has got a 120 watt lamp, so you are going to get some noise. It does take considerable airflow to cool that. But when you're watching movies or when we're watching stuff on the screen just now, I didn't find the fan to be overly distracting. In actual fact, I didn't really notice it let me know in the comments what you think of the noise levels of the fan. I think it's perfectly acceptable. Again, depending where it's going to be, if you're listening to things late at night, very quiet, then it could be a little bit distracting. But realistically, if you're watching a movie on a larger screen in a room, I don't think it's going to bother you at all. And you certainly won't hear it over the normal ambient noise. Although in some quieter scenes, again, it may become slightly noticeable, but not a great deal. I've certainly heard considerably louder. So I think that pretty much wraps up this one. Uh, let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. Obviously, if you want to check it out for yourself, go over to ABIS. I will put links for their website in the video description. We're not affiliated, so um, whether you buy one or not, it doesn't affect us in any way, shape or form. I'm just presenting the facts as I see them. So that has been the ABIS HD 6K. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.